analysis on the dramatic sell-off. We want to go to Steve Moore of the Heritage Foundation and Jonas Ferris of MacFunds.com and an economist as well. All right, guys. You know, we heard some optimism there from Maria in terms of what she's hearing there in Davos, Switzerland. We also heard a little optimism from Lori Rothman that traders are saying, look, you know, maybe this is a capitulation. We're going to put in a bottom and, and people are going to start buying. I want to ask you about something uh, that's a little less optimistic, and that's whether or not we're seeing something here now that may be uh, somewhat like what we saw in 2007. I mean, Steve, the fear, I think, is that this isn't just a, an equity sell-off for the day, mm -hmm. but this is the result of what the Fed has done. This is the chickens coming home to roost, and we've got a credit crisis that's mm -hmm. going to kick in thanks to all that high yield stuff that people were buying. Yeah, I think what the chickens think? are coming home to roost. And, you know, we had six, seven years of zero interest rates and just overinvestment. And I think right now you're starting to see a huge pullback. And I would say this for the first time in a long time, I, I'm going to say the dreaded word R, that I think we're looking at a potential okay. recession I've said it in too. 2016. I, I, I worry that we are, too. I've said I mean, it. I, you know, and by yeah. the way, just to, to familiarize everyone, when, when you talk about recession, you're talking two about two quarters consecutive of negative. quarters of negative growth. And yeah. you think we could No, I think it's possible. I, don't, I think it's still a little bit unlikely, but I do think we could get at least one quarter of negative. Look, the, the fourth quarter GDP is going to come in at one to one and a half percent. That's lousy. Yeah. First quarter is looking horrific. And if this continues, by, by the way, but, but there a recession is a wealth we effect. can handle, right? Like it a is, recession it is. Look, we can handle. I'm of, more worried yeah. about something bigger, where you've got all this, uh, all this interest and appetite for high yield junk mm -hmm. that uh, is evaporating, of course. And and you know, a lot of a lot of these companies are going to wind up defaulting on this stuff. You look at the energy sector. Yep, that, that sounds familiar. All those what, MLPs what and all the money they borrowed, yep. and they're not going to be able to pay it back. And a lot of different institutions, a lot of different mom and pa investors, yep. uh, believe yep. it or not, are invested the in junk, this junk stuff. The junk bonds look to me a lot like what the mortgage-backed securities looked like back in you know 2006 and 2007. Mm -hmm. So there's a real worry there. I would just add one thing to this. I'm a political animal. I'm in Washington D.C. I mean, l just. Listen to the rhetoric that's coming out, Trish. It's so yeah. bearish. I mean, we had a debate last week uh, among the Democrats. Mm -hmm. uh, Bernie Sanders, maybe not a 90% tax rate, but 70 or 80%. I mean, that's craziness, right? Mm -hmm. Hillary comes out last a week or two ago with a, you know, she wants an income tax surcharge. She well, wants to raise yeah. the capital gains tax. Trump on the Republican side saying maybe we need a tariff. Well, that's all negative for the economy. Well, and then, of course, John McCain coming out just a, a few moments ago telling our congressional reporter there on Capitol Hill that, uh, you know, I mean, American voters are, are going to blame the president. It's just, you know, the unfortunate reality for whoever's in office. If you happen to catch something like this, um, it's not good for the party. But I, I, I want to hold that conversation for a little okay. bit later and get back to what's happening here as we watch a market that's off 365, off the lows of the session. Um, Jonas, do you think that people are saying this is a buying opportunity? I mean, given that we've been able to come back from the lows of the day? Yeah, and that's the problem. It, look, this is not a political issue. This issue was created by Wall Street like the last two bubbles that burst, not just 07, but 1999-2000. We were sold this natural resource story that America was in decline, that there was going to be inflation, that the U.S. dollar was going to collapse, and you had to protect yourself. You just had Bill Gross quote on it a little while ago. His firm, his old firm, I should say, not Janice, but PIMCO, is just as guilty as anybody for creating a whole plethora of idiotic products to benefit from commodities. They had a real return fund, this whole notion okay, that you have to have I'm just going to jump in, because I, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. Right Jonas, I don't think you can actually blame these companies for doing this. If, if you want to sure. blame anyone, you can look at the Federal Reserve, because they kept no, a no, very low can't. interest rate policy that, for that long. And what do you do if you're an investor? You can't make any money on your CD. You don't you have... Can't. So you, you go know, down you and you can start looking them. for some other kind of product, and you say to the guy at PIMCO, and what oil else ETF, can you give That's me? my problem. You don't need an oil ETF just because interest rates are zero. That was just an idiotic product that was designed. Yeah, that you know, is why it, it, oil listen, went over I do $100. believe in the power of the individual, and an individual knows what they're getting into. So don't tell me that it's the fault of all these big bad companies for creating products that people I'm wanted. Saying, people wanted the yield. In, Right, because they were sold this idiotic story that they needed inflation protection, which in fact you need deflation no, they protection, money. which is come on, 
on, they needed money. I mean, look, a retiree living on a fixed income can make zero in a CD. They need something more. So suddenly Puerto Rican debt, which is yielding double digits, doesn't look yes, so bad. Yes, unfortunately, I mean, but, they but were here's sold what I think a lot of yield reaching. On. Here's what we can agree on. We are in a situation that's problematic right now. Is that fair to say? <laughs> yes, because investors keep to this day calling me. I'm an investment advisor, not an economist, wanting to get in on oil because it's going back someday. That whole mentality is insane. Oil's not going back to 100 or even 50. This is the price range it was supposed to be in before people started investing in oil as an asset class. This includes investment advisors putting a certain percentage in gold, a certain invention commodity ETFs. This is a nonsense allocation. If you want to be in U.S. stocks and in investment grade bonds right now, a balanced portfolio, you don't have to worry about what's going on. If you are still yield reaching and MLPs that are all going to go broke or commodity funds or leveraged or this or that, those alternatives, the real asset classes, not to mention the funds that are shorting treasuries right now and long junk bonds, to your earlier point, that are unwinding those positions mm -hmm. now, they are losing money on both sides. Every major fund family is almost involved in that strategy. So are highly you leveraged that hedge this funds is do it with a leverage. systemic so crisis a la 2007, sir? It, it my, is a my point junk is, bond crisis. Cr yeah. Okay. Go. Junk bond crisis, you're saying my it's, point it's another is, look, version of what we saw no, in 08. No, here's what I'm saying. Is, I'm worried about the policy response here. I do think there's a policy element to this crisis because we haven't had any growth policies in Washington for five or six years. Now, everybody, in one, including you know people on Fox Business News, we're all obsessed with what the Fed is going to do. And my point is this. This is the crisis in policy is not monetary policy. It's we've got terrible tax policy. We've got terrible over-regulation. I watch your show all the time. You talk to businessmen and women who say they're being strangled by this regulatory burden. We've got to do something to relax you, you, that. You can't have one without the other. Fiscal and monetary yeah. policy go but hand you, in my hand. Point but is when you, the Fed's the only you, game in town, yes, yes. suddenly no, they're pushed the into point. a position we where they're doing thinking, stuff they shouldn't. Trish, we keep thinking we can fix these problems with the Fed. And we can, what I'm saying you is can't. we can't. Yeah. No, no, you can't. can't. You, you need right. other, well, other kinds actually, of, of, of policy yeah. vehicles. Go ahead, Jonathan. Politically, we're making the problem worse because this government just decided to sell the strategic oil as some sort of solution to the budget, which is going to drive the oil price <laughs> right, even stupid. lower, which right. is going to lead to more bankruptcies, yeah. more firings. In America, our whole supposedly drill baby drill economy is collapsing in on itself because of a, a guess for $70, $80, $100 oil. That is, the government should be filling that reserve, trying to prop the price up like they should have supported housing prices before it collapsed and led to all those defaults. That is where we're going to have problems. We could get down into the teens in oil if they start selling out of the strategic petroleum reserves. So the government is actually not helping. It's hurting this commodity bubble. So you as would rather be dependent on, on a Middle Eastern uh, oil production system rather than having it right here at home? Those countries, you want to go political, the political instability that's going to build from teens oil, in the, across, you already seen it with Saudi Arabia and Iran and Russia. These countries are, are we're living on oil revenues, and now it's gone, and they're going to start I doing, know, I don't I, know what, political invasion because of it. I can't help it. I think the, uh, of it. the American in me kind of likes the idea of us being able oh, to yes. provide our right. own energy and not be reliant on the Middle East, uh, even if it means down in the teens, and you know, so be it, it's tougher for them. You want to talk about stupidity. Uh, yeah, look, I agree. Selling oil from the reserves right now is stupid. Doubly stupid is investing now in green energy. I mean, anybody out there is investing in green energy when we have the cheapest oil and gas and coal prices, yeah. you know, in 30 years. And the here, federal here. government just passed a bill that's passing, passing out billions of dollars more to solar and wind power. It's crazy. Get out. The future is fossil fuels. It's not green energy. All right. Well, Jonas, <laughs> thank you so much. Steve, stay with me. We've got okay. more to talk about. 